What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Leader Geo, and this is season seven, episode one of the locker room. We are getting prepped and going over the team building that I did for my very first game of this season. This is against the Free State Tora Cats, guys. I'm really excited to see what my draft has to do. If you are curious about my draft, uh, you can check out my draft recap video, which is probably the last video that was up on my channel. But if not, just check out my channel. Uh, Maybe hit a subscribe while you're here, who knows? But I'm going to go over what I've brought this week uh, and what I anticipate my opponent will have this week too. But let's first just talk about the roster. So my roster, uh, if you look to the left, is Tapu Fini, Salamence, Arcanine, Conkelder, Ferrothorn, Gengar, Bronzong, Heliolisk, Umbreon, Aerodactyl, and Yarados. And on the right you will see my opponent's team which i have ordered somewhat based on if you guys know if you're familiar with this series you'll already know how i do this but to those of you who are not uh, the way that i normally order the team on the right is not exactly 100 percent the likelihood that i think they'll bring the pokemon but it's governed by that it's sort of that's the idea behind it so the top row the second row, they're usually Pokemon that I think are pretty likely to bring. However, sometimes I order them in a way that it's like, this row is, I think they'll bring something from here, but not all of them. And I go over that in the video, but let's go over his team. He's got Mandibuzz, he's got Weavile, who is his Z captain. He's got uh, Alolan Marowak, Waka. He's got Granbull, Celebi, Keldeo, Landorus Eye without Sheer Force. That's super important to note. Uh, he's got Torkoal, he's got Venusaur, and he's got Alolan Ninetales. So, let's go over the team that I brought for this uh, for this week. We have got Fresh, the Defensive Arcanine, Moana, the Tapu Fini, Dumbledore, the Conkelder, Genghis Gar, the Gengar, Robocrop, the Ferrothorn, and Mad Mets, the Salamence. So, uh, let's start off by looking at the the team that he has kind of objectively he's got mandibuzz which is really bulky it's a really good shutdown to a fair number of the mons on my draft um, to stop them from sweeping offensively the best things i have for it don't match up quite so well against a lot of the other members of his team and become somewhat of a liability so looking at uh mandibuzz that is one thing that's going to have to be weakened if i'm going to hope to sweep with anything We've got Weavile, who is his Z captain. The reason that's significant is that Moana is normally an incredible uh, switch in to, to, to the Weavile. But if he's bringing Poisonium and he goes for an Acid Downpour against the Tapu Fini uh, because he's rocking the Poison Jab, I cannot survive a two hit KO against him. So that is somewhat problematic for me. Otherwise, uh, Tapu Fini is a great answer to him. He's got the Waka, Alolan Marowak. Uh, he's largely one of the reasons I can't bring the Heliolisk this week. Keldeo, uh, I'm skipping forward. Granbull is a really good dragon answer for him. It's a really safe switch into Mence. Celebi, Keldeo, and Landorus. And I'm gonna talk about these all at once. The top two rows, I'm fairly confident they bring. I'm fairly confident he brings Mandibuzz because it's a great defensive check. It has uh, Defog for him which I, the only other hazard removal he has is Torkoal. So I'm pretty sure he brings Mandibuzz as a kind of check all for everything. It has Defog, it's got Roost, it'll likely have both of those on his moveset. It can carry Foul Play, which will help it against anything that tries to set up, maybe Ments. Um, he could run Knock Off if he wants to start ditching items. Uh, he can have U-Turn to get momentum. He's got a lot of options on that thing. So. So that's my, uh, I predict he'll bring it, I'm pretty certain he'll bring it actually. Weavile, even though it shares a lot of the weaknesses of Mandibuzz, I think he'll bring it anyway. Because again, it's a really good fast check and answer to a lot of my mons. It makes Gengar um, potentially a liability. If it's running Pursuit, Gengar can get trapped very easily. He outspeeds Gengar as long as he's jolly. I am running max speed on my Gengar. If he is adamant, it doesn't matter how much speed he runs, a max speed Gengar outspeeds a max speed adamant Weavile by one point, regardless of whether it's 50 or 100. Good to know, guys. Good note there. Waka is just insanely powerful. Now, 
Ordinarily, he checks fresh really well, but let's go over my fresh set, shall we? I have Flamethrower Thief, Extreme Speed, Morning Sun. I'm running Keyberry and Intimidate. There is a very specific reason for this. If Arcanine comes in on something, whatever reason, I get an Intimidate off, and he switches out and comes in on me with Waka, and I don't have the attack drop on him, ordinarily... Earthquake would two hit KO. My goal here is to make Earthquake and Bone Meringue not be able to beat Fresh, and I want to either defeat the Waka one on one and make this a very secure check to him, or completely neuter him. So you'll notice Thief on this set. Once my Keyberry is gone, I can steal the Thick Club from Marowak. And once the Thick Club's gone, that thing is not a threat anymore. It does not have the offensive firepower to get through Moana or Fresh. Even Ments, it, it really, it, it loses a lot of strength uh, once that happens. The Key Berry, if you guys aren't familiar with Key Berry, it's when you get hit by physical attack, your defense goes up by one. So it's, it's to simulate that Fresh can be an Intimidate Mon and still have those Intimidate Calcs, even if he doesn't get the Intimidate off. Once he gets in and gets that Keyberry off, he's very safe to stay in. Um, it really does help a lot with having him check multiple things and removing a good switch in for him uh, on the uh, on the opponent's side. So, Thief, that's what Thief's there for. It also hits the uh, Celebi super effective. It gives me an opportunity once the Keyberry is gone to steal leftovers if he's a lefties set. Uh, once the key berry is gone, Thief becomes more useful, but it's not like knockoff. The damage is consistent whether I have an item and steal their item or not. So it's 60 power, a little bit weaker than the crunch, but it's still uh, my primary way to completely neuter that Marowak. And once it's done, uh, I, I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's one of the ways I'm ensuring that Marowak will not beat my Arcanine 1v1 unless it comes in at a really atrocious time. So that's the point of fresh. Extreme speed, just in case I need the increased priority to take something out. Flamethrower, because uh, notably anything that I would one hit KO with Flare Blitz, I one hit KO with Flamethrower. Anything I would two hit KO with Flare Blitz, I two hit KO with Flamethrower. Unless I'm running some very off calcs about Mon that I really honestly don't think are coming. But uh, the one, one, one difference is that. Flare Blitz would Oko a Weavile, and Flamethrower um, will not if he's at full health, but it will after rocks. So that is why I have that. Morning Sun is there just as my reliable recovery. So this is fresh. Uh, running these, I don't know what happened here. Why does this always happen? The numbers are wrong. I have 220 HP. I must have clicked and dragged it or something, but 220 HP, level 50, that's an odd number. A decent amount of defense. The reason I'm running this uh, amount of speed is that it outspeeds a 4 EV investment in speed on the Celebi. So if he's running a defensive Celebi, I'll outspeed it. That's why I'm doing that. Uh, let's move over to Moana. Moana is running Surf, Moonblast, Defog, and Protect. He's a mixed defensive set, a little bit more on the physically defensive side. Uh, running Leftovers is the item. Now, Moana's job here is uh, as my primary... I'm just getting messaged by Duncan. He's getting, uh, getting ready to... Uh, getting ready to battle too. So I'm just gonna let, he's gotta get a few of his Pokemon legitimately, he says. <laughs> All right, Duncan, so let's finish up this. Moana's job here is sort of a decent switch in to everything and Moonblast highly pressures his team. So Moana can pretty safely switch into Mandibuzz, pretty safely switch into Weavile uh, once I've scouted to make sure that he doesn't have Acid Downpour or e even just Poison Jab, he won't two hit KO me with that and I can Oko him with Moonblast. Um, he's... There's a really weird mix-up, kind of mixed thing going on with Waka, but ultimately I defeat him with Surf uh, and he shouldn't be able to beat me in return, uh, even with Shadow Bone spam with the set I'm running. Grand Bull, we kind of don't really do much to each other. He doesn't hit me very hard. Um, I can kind of hit him pretty hard with the Surf, but ultimately it's just sort of chipping away at each other. Celebi obviously is a problem to this set. I don't really have much for it. Keldeo, this walls supremely well. This is basically a guaranteed switch into Keldeo. Um, Moonblast will hit it super effectively, so I can break through its subs if it's going for a sub-calm mindset, something like that. Um, the Landorus, 
because it's not sheer force, it either highly chips away at itself, um, and it with a life orb, there's a chance that it can two hit KO me with Sludge Wave. Maybe, but um, without it'll chip away at itself in the process. I can rock protect to restore a little bit of extra health, and I don't think after two turns of uh, lefties, the Sludge Wave will two hit KO, and then I can not oko it with surf but after two ticks of life orb and the surf it will kill it and without the life orb it won't two hit ko me and i get two surfs off on it so we are good in that regard it matches up well against a lot of the the lower tier guys i'm not really talking about very much the torkoal the venusaur the alolan nine tails the alolan nine tails i'm not really sure what purpose it would have on his team it would have a difficult time against a lot of my mons. Kinkelder is basically just a guaranteed switch into it because uh, Kinkelder, which I'm about to get to next, is uh, Assault Vest. So it can eat up his low special attack hits really well. Uh, I don't see the hail as a benefit for his team. So I, I just, I don't really see why he brings it. Torkoal Venusaur. There's interesting options. Um, when running through the team matchups, Growth EQ Venusaur in the sun is actually kind of dangerous against my team. However, Torkoal will have a very difficult time getting in, getting the sun up, and getting out to Venusaur because I can pretty reliably switch fresh in against the Torkoal and under the sun restore 75% of my HP. He won't be able to take me out with Earth Power and so I'll just wear out the sun i can chip away at him too with my very high power flamethrowers he doesn't have very good special defense so if he wants to do other things like rapid spin instead of attacking me and i get my health up i outspeed him it's not a great it's not a favorable matchup for him and if he does end up bringing in the venusaur with the sun and he risks getting basically o-code by my flamethrower so i don't know that that matchup really is going to be something that's on his radar uh, so I don't think he brings the bottom row, which is why I'm not really talking too much about it. But uh, other than that, the Tapu Fini is really just a safe switch in for me. Very bulky, a good reliable defogger. Um, his stealth rockers of note are Marowak, who's not bad because he forces a lot of switches. The Landorus, though uh, he really can't afford the move slot. Because if you consider the hardest hitting moves on that Landorus, now that he's lost a Shear Force, still Earth Power. Um, he could run a mix set or a physical set, um, but Earth Power is good against Fresh, but it's not really going to do much to Moana or Robocop, and uh, Mad Mets can switch in on it. He could run HP Fire for Robocop, maybe, but then Moana, again, still resists it, and like I said about the, the Sludge Wave, so it, Moana resists that. And the three of them all resist one of those other moves that he could have had, so it becomes really difficult for him to select the right move to beat those three members especially given that he has to slot all of those and then he's running into four move slot syndrome if he wants to run stealth rock so those are his potential stealth rockers i think i win the the rock war here um i'll fast forward to robocrop here robocrop is running gyro ball toxic leech seed and stealth rock running a physically defensive set with enough uh, attack investment and brave nature to two hit KO a 252 HP Celebi. Uh, the reason that that is significant is that an HP fire from an a bulky modest Celebi will two hit KO Robocrop. So if I am in, I go for a Leech Seed. He finds that opportunity to free switch in Celebi. He can go for the HP Fire right away if he wants to, but I'm also going to two-hit KO him with Gyro Ball, so I'll really pressure him. Um, uh, this is my rocker for the week, Leech Seed, just to get some chip, and Toxic because it helps me beat the Mandibuzz. Once I put that Mandibuzz on a timer with the Toxic, he can't beat, uh, he can't switch in and survive Mad Mint setting up and beating him anymore, so that's sort of what I'm going for there. Uh, my Mad Ment setup is Flyinium Z Moxie. He's running Earthquake, Fly, Steel Wing, and Dragon Dance. No Dragon Stab this week because he doesn't have any dragons. It's not going to super. It's not going to be super effective against anything. He does have a Fairy, um, and it's not as strong as Fly against the Mandibuzz. Uh, Flyinium Z 
uh, can it's a, so powerful that it all but guarantees me a KO against a lot of things. I get some chip off on that Mandibuzz. I don't even need to set up against it. I can get the Dragon Dance off, and um, that allows me to outspeed a lot of the members of his team. The stop checks to this are Ice Shard on Weavile. So in order for Mad Men's to really sweep, I'm going to need to take out the Weavile and uh, potentially weaken that Mandibuzz first. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the Dumbledore. The Dumbledore is running Iron Fist instead of Guts because I'm going to rely on Moana's Misty terrain to keep status off of Dumbledore. And there's not really a whole lot of things that risk burning it outside of the uh, Marowak. I am running enough speed EVs to outspeed a Marowak that is not running speed EVs. Uh, I'm putting kind of a weird number there. 28 just to be hard to predict maybe he thinks like oh he'll run four i'll run eight but maybe he runs eight so i'll run 16. i don't know that he's gonna run 28 that's quite a lot um and i'm just running max attack uh with some good hp investment running the assault vest on it gives me another switch into landorus um it allows me to take some hits from the keldeo it makes me a okay switch into the celebi as long as it's not running psychics again celebi kind of runs into the same issue as a lot of the other members of his team, Celebi's not powerful enough to just burst through my team. In order for Celebi to really hurt me, he's got to be Nasty Plot. If he's running Nasty Plot, you got to consider what his other moves are going to be. If he wants the recovery with Synthesis, he's down to just two moves, and I'm guaranteed to wall him with one Pokemon or another uh, on my team. If He might want to run Stab. That's fine. Grass and Psychic. That means Robocrop walls him entirely if he wants to run hp fire also that means he doesn't have hp ground and fresh is a good switch into him and uh if he's running max speed then he's not very bulky i can uh counter attack him pretty easily with a lot of the other mons on my team gengar for example can oko him um fresh is a really good switch in if he doesn't have earth power so the question becomes what do you run if you're four moves and no nasty plot you don't have enough power behind you to beat anyone on my uh, any of my walls really well 1v1 uh, so I just need to kind of scout a little bit what he's got here uh, and and kind of go from there looking at my team and looking at his team now that you know all the sets uh, let's just make sure I went over everything I don't think I went over Gengar Gengar's running choice specs this week guys Genghis Gar has shadow ball sludge wave destiny bond and trick Destiny Bond just kind of a last stop check against some really powerful mons on his team, something that might potentially um, ruin me, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Uh, if I'm predicting the Weavile switch in, I mean, it, usually it's a better idea for me to just go for Sludge Wave. Once the rocks are up, Genghis Gar Oko's the Weavile. Weavile could uh, revenge kill me pretty well with the Pursuit, uh, but then I can switch in Dumbledore, threaten it out, etc., etc. So I have a lot of options there. Trick is. If I find the right opportunity, and I'm not sure where I will, because almost always it's going to be more in my favor to go for Shadow Ball or Sludge Wave, it two-hit KOs his entire team, except for the Mandibuzz, unless I've gotten some rock damage, some prior damage on it. So once I get a little prior damage on the Mandibuzz, Gengar outspeeds almost everyone on his team, uh, barring Scarf sets and barring the Weavile. So... It allows me to really put a, put some serious pressure on his team and potentially take out a lot of his really big threats. So uh, Gengar is going to be kind of my mid game sweeper a little bit. I really want to get I really want to get rocks up with Robocrop as soon as possible. Then I want to give Gengar an opportunity to really put in some hurt on things. Uh, following up with that, if uh, if I feel like I'm at risk of getting uh, taken down by Weavile. I need to keep Dumbledore in the back. Dumbledore straight up beats the Weavile. Nothing it can do. Gets uh, O-code by the Mach Punch. I need to keep Dumbledore healthy as long as he's sitting on the Weavile. Just to make sure that I'm safe against it. Um, I need to, There's one thing I didn't check about this. Uh, he might be running Aerial Ace Flyinium Z. But again, anything that Weavile runs... Puts it at risk of being checked by something else. If he runs Aerial Ace over uh, a fighting type move, Robocrop's going to wall it and potentially kill it. If he doesn't run Poison Jab, then Moana kills it. And Fresh is just a really good switch in in general. Can take a lot of his hits really well. So the Weavile, 
it's a big threat and he really needs to bring it because it answers Gengar and Mad Men, so very few other things on his team do, but I'm very, I have a very easy job countering it, either revenge killing it with Dumbledore or switching into it with fresh Moana and Robocrop, so he has to be really careful with the Weavile and he has to use it very pragmatically and, uh, and keep it really safe, so Dumbledore has to stay really safe. A lot of the game plan here is going to be switching in and out of fresh Moana and Robocrop as much as possible, setting the stage for Genghis Gar to take some lives and give Mad Men the opportunity to set up late game. Failing that, Gengar can always sweep late game because it's very fast, that speeds a lot of his team. So figure out a lot of the sets, figure out who's uh, got scarfs, potential scarf mons on his team. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm missing one member of his team. And I know what it is. It's Metagross. Um, I don't really want to re redo this whole thing, guys. He has a Metagross. Uh, I'm going to put that on the second row. Uh, I think the likelihood that he brings that is pretty similar to uh, Waka or Grand Bull. Uh, they're all slow but powerful physical threats. Uh, and I think that's really likely that he scarfs it if he does bring it. Because a scarfed... Uh, Metagross can run Ice Punch to threaten Mad Mints if he hasn't set up yet. It can run uh, a Fighting Stab to, t to try and take on Robocrop a little bit better. He can run Earthquake to outspeed and Oko the Gengar. Zen Headbutt takes on uh, Dumbledore. He has a really hard time against Moana. Not he's He will have a difficult time taking that one on. And Fresh uh, Earthquake uh, again. So... So it's likely uh, one of the mon that he's going to consider bringing. Uh, I'll definitely, I'll, you know what, I'll put it up there a little bit later. I'm not going to do it now uh, while recording. But that's sort of that's sort of my thought process here, guys. The game plan here is definitely get some chip on the mons that'll stop a sweep and then start taking some lives. Uh, work out the safe switch-ins to a lot of his threats and, um, and kind of go from there and make sure that He's not really able to put me in a position where I'm not able to get uh, get a good switch into any of his threats later on. Fortunately for me, there's one thing about his team. He doesn't have Mon that share counters a lot. So uh, you look at the Weavile, you look at the Waka, you look at the Keldeo. They're all kind of checked by a different Mon. So if, I, if he uses something different to take out fresh it doesn't mean that i lose you know like in the process in the exchange and i lose fresh and i weaken one of those threats i i didn't lose the game by losing that you know what i mean the only thing is keeping dumbledore safe for the weavile because weavile can sweep me late game if uh, if i let too many things get weakened so let me know what you guys think of the team in the uh, in the comment section below definitely the interesting sets this week are my key berry thief fresh i think that's probably my most out there set, obviously not running Dragon on Mad Ments, mostly because um, Fairy Terrain is going to kind of weaken it and I don't need it. I don't need the super effective hit. Uh, I have a stronger stab in Fly and he can't switch into it. He, he pretty much has nothing to switch into it and it gives me that supersonic sky strike. So I'm really excited for this game. I think I have a good matchup. I'm going to be honest, I do think I match up well, but I know Duncan is a very, very good battler. And if he has as many uh, as many people in his front office as some of the other coaches, I know that they'll come up with some really great sets. So I'm looking forward to the battle. It's going to be happening really soon. He messaged me just a moment ago saying that he's getting his team ready. So um, I will see you guys tomorrow. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.